want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you YouTube, Steve O Trucker here. Right, today we are gonna have a little bit of a talk video about a CB radio. Does it still have a place in trucking? It's probably my big question. And I would like to hear from yourselves. What do you think of CB radio? Do you think it still should have a place in trucking? Should it make a comeback? You know, personally, I think it should. You know, because there is an issue that, you know, if you need to communicate with a fellow trucker around you or warn other truckers of hazards, you know, delays and all that, it's pretty hard unless you've got that driver's phone number. You know, which I know that's been always the argument, all mobile phones have changed it. No, it hasn't. You know, <laughs> I don't have every truck driver's phone number, let alone could you fast dial them when you need and know who's around you? Probably not. <laughs> or is there another solution that's similar to CB that we need to consider? I mean, if there was another solution similar to CB that was hands reasonably hands-free, Sorry about that guys, you had to see that, but I can't avoid it because we're on a now a bit of the road. We are mate transfer mode as we speak. Because with that heavy in the roads that's slick. Oh well, yeah. But uh, in my opinion I think CBs should still have a place amongst trucking and should make a comeback. And that's my opinion. I you know, which is my personal view on it. Right or wrong, as they would say. I think some of the reasons why CB kind of died off, it's just the amount of setup and cost, and probably employers not let, wanting them fitted in the trucks, maybe, or, you know, stuff ranging from that. And I said it, the com you could argue the so-called complexity of it, and yes, it can be complex on the initial setup of it, but once it's set up, it's set up, it's ready to go. There's not too much in it, and I suppose, yes, there is a slight learning curve. You know, I know for me, I would have to learn to use it as well, you know, but, you know, it's like anything, any kind of speak or language, it's a bit like texting. You know, you pick up text speak as you go along. And yes, it can be abused, but can't anything be abused? You know, everything can be abused. You know, I'm not agreeing with people who abuse systems like, you know, troll and all that, but no matter what system you have, there's always a weakness to, you know, there always will be people who want to mess about and, you know, troll it, as they would say. So it does have some cons, but I think some of the cons is just because there's not such a demand for it. If there was a high demand, there may be simpler systems on the market, you know, to install on your truck. And I've been looking personally, and there were some pretty good systems lurking about, but, you know, really, I would personally want, personally, I'd rather go into a shop that knows more two things about it and be able to go right I'm a novice with it what what do I need you know I'm um, after a simple system to install in a truck you know bloody blah and you know and hopefully and to go right this is what you need you know or to say look if you pay this amount you know we'll set it up for you no dramas but you know it it's more of a question of, you know, that as dr drivers, it's very hard for us to communicate, you know, with fellow 
fellow professionals at the end of the day, you know, to warn them of dangers and such like, not without potentially causing confusion, because, you know, the ways that people communicate tend to be flashing of lights, waving your hands around, yes, giving some hand signals, but some of the hand signals mean multitude of things, and the fact that the information could be outdated, and that driver could be carrying on de going down the road warning of people, and I had this the other day. I was like, what are you warning me about? There's nothing up ahead. So obviously what must have been, must have cleared off. And you know, in that circumstance, I could have got on the way in, it's all clear, well, or, or yes, it's still there, you know. But yeah, it, it's one of those things that I think trucking is missing. And yes, I'm not denying there is still trucks with CBs and, you know, but they're not as common as they were. And I would do actually honestly think it, it should make a comeback, but I think because of some of the limitations of it, e.g. the setup of it, is its main Achilles heel in my mind. And the perceived complexity of it. Even though actually it's not too complex, it you know, there's lots of YouTube videos on it, you know, that can run you through how to change channels and you know and generally trucking channel I believe is nineteen, even though I know that. You know, it could be wrong, I need to check what the UK one is, but I believe it is nineteen. But uh you know, tell me what your thoughts are on it. You know, it, it's just something that I've been thinking about of late. You know, I sort of go in between with CB, going like, I, I love the idea of it, but I think the thing with me, I just look at, you know, when they get to stage looking at the CBs and the antennas, the wiring loom, how to mount the antenna, how to wire it in, you know, and also trying to also think how do I wire it in respectfully to the truck so I don't cause any damage to it, I don't, you know, because I know a lot of drivers are restricted to, you know, not allowed to drill holes, which, you know, it's understandable, or make any major alterations, so not without having to ask your boss. I'm actually very curious what people's thoughts are on CB radios, you know, or is there a similar sort of technology out there that's more simpler for truckers to have that works in a similar sort of way? Maybe there's an app on the phone, there probably might very well maybe, but I think the issue with an app on the phone, it then means you're playing around with the phone then and that, you know, <sighs> compared to CB that you can just throw a switch and you can be talking and for again there's a different way of setups and yes you've got the mic that you can hold which you can argue the same as holding a mobile phone yeah you could argue that but to me you know a speaker system setup you know but yeah I would like to know what your thoughts are on it because it's something that has always got me thinking going what well, you know and this is one thing that is a bit of Achilles heel within the job that, you know, as professional drivers, we want to help each other out, but we, half the time, we can't. Or not clearly, shall I say, help up each other out. You know, as I said, it falls down to flashing of lights and hand gestures, and hoping the other side understands it or doesn't misread it. <laughs> Because <laughs> I've had it before and I thought someone was calling me something. Yeah, I'm not going to go into details and end up he was warning me of coppers. You know, uh, he got me a bit I wait. He was just like, why are you calling me that? <laughs> Luckily it was slow, slow, so I could open the window and go, what are you after? Why are you calling me a... No, I wasn't calling you. I was letting you know, oh, okay, sorry, my bad. <laughs> But, you know, it stops anything like that, because it's easy for anybody to get the wrong end of the stick, and yes, you can argue that on any aspect, even verbally. 
but you're less likely verbally or you're able to quickly recorrect you know verbally if it has been misheard because everybody messes up with labeling and I was speaking with a colleague the other day and uh, we're giving weight figures over and I accidentally quoted a figure because you know I was concentrating 100% on the road and as I, as I stated to them at the end of the speech quite you know when realised he misunderstood me going right well, I actually meant that sorry you know this is probably why I gave you the wrong figure I wasn't probably paying a full attention on the first figure I gave you I probably scanned over the bottom figure and that's how I got that figure you know easy mistake to make <laughs> you know but it only demonstrates on hands free anyway that actually as long as you are focused on the hunt and on the road that's a good combat indicator you are focused on what you're driving because you know when you're chatting to somebody you're actually muddling up your words a little bit because you are focused on the road you know certainly if you had as I was at, when I was getting the figures over at crossroads and such like where my attention obviously had to be a hundred percent of what was going on what was coming when do I need to move off what are the hazards you know can I, don't I, will I? But you know, that's a perfect example of getting muddled up, but at least verbally we're able to recorrect each other and, you know, highlight there was an issue. <laughs> when verb, if you're flashing and giving hand gestures, you're gone in an instant and you left the driver, if he's got the wrong end of the stick, confused. And, you know, maybe angry potentially if he's got the wrong end of the stick, you know. And also, you know, with cases like in the past where I've been flashed and told to slow down when actually I was going very slow anyway. <laughs> Just because they, it's hard to tell sometimes. You might think a truck's going quick when actually it isn't. And if you're on the CB radio and you're going, slow down, mate, go, yeah, I'm doing 20. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> you know. Or if you had a fellow truck up your back, you know, and go back off, please, mate. You know, give me a bit of a one, please. You know, potentially. But it is what it is, and you know, I don't. It's hard to say if it would come back. On in in a in a realistic, positive world, yes. But I don't see it coming, making a big comeback. But it's something that's got me thinking, you know, that there is a technology gap, you know, for instant communication in your area. You know, so to be able to, as I said, to chat with other people who have CB radios or whatever technology it is, you know, in the area, to, as I said, to notify them of hazards or just have a chat or, you know see what the weather's up to or you know etc etc I saw some people on your contact list on your phone book <laughs> and in some ways that would bring back a more of a social aspect of trucking you know it won't be for everybody you know a lot of truckers are you know loners to a degree I'm not meaning that in a bad sense, you know, a lot of them are married, they do have a social life, but they tend to be of the mindset of a loner to a degree. In some ways you've got to have that slight mindset, but it doesn't mean you don't want to be social. You know, <laughs> we don't want to communicate, no, a lot of us do want to communicate and have a chat and, you know, know what's going on, what's the latest bit of gossip, you know. <laughs> But I do see a technology like CB becoming more potent. I think it is something that is potent, that is needed. There is a gap in the market here. You know, mobile phones can't fill this gap. There is a gap for this technology for within our profession. But it's either going to be CB radio or something else similar, you know needs to probably come in and there is there's plenty of technology it could probably be something like CB radio but that's far more simple to install in the truck 
you know, you can plug into your troll vault and, you know, you maybe just need a small liquid intern that could even be in your cab. You know, or it's just a very simple antenna thing that you can just stick out. There's no lengthening of antennas or fiddling around. It just auto tunes in and, you know, you're set to go. You just set maybe what channel you want to be on or, you know. Which you could argue that'd be like CB, but if it was a small simplizer that comes in as a kit, you know, you're not having to faff about with finding power cables, you know, sorting out, tuning the antenna in and stuff like that. I know, yes, I'm very novice on this and I'm probably, and I think this is why CB still have the place. It's just, I think, I said it's the Achilles heel that is the issue and if there was some sort of system that could be like ready to walk them all out of the box more or less you know with very little faff you know or knowledge in setup or CBs that that would be the ultimate system really and that was intuitive so if there was some tuning it's intuitive how you would do it and had the equipment with it to do it if equipment was needed. But this is why I think there is probably a potential <laughs> yeah, sorry about this guys. As you see, we've just met a truck, so... Uh, <laughs> as we were talking about CB radios, you know... And actually in some ways, that demonstrates why there is a gap in this technology. You know, if we're coming down, you know, but I know, yes, the only would be the only way for that to be 100% working is if every truck had it as well. But, you know, yes, I, I granted it's always going to be the case that not every truck, truck will have it or have it on, but, you know, but as I said, if it's affordable, easy to set up, you know, there's very little reason then why you wouldn't have one. But, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. You know, because a bit like the other day, perfect example coming down this road, you know, I knew my colleague was coming down and I phoned him up to see where he was. Just to make sure we weren't going to meet <laughs> at an awkward position or place. But that's only because I knew I had one of the colleagues coming down, you know. <laughs> and we were going to be in a similar sort of time period of transiting around this area. Wait for the colleague with a low loader coming down with a digger. So yeah, I, you know, that, as I said, that was almost a perfect demonstration of what, what all the reasons why it could be handy to have a CB, because you could... CB down and you know yes there is some error as well signal you know that might not work but at least if you had it at least you had a tool to try to radio out yep truck coming down such and such road you know anybody else coming down it you know <laughs> Yeah, so as it yet again I would like to know what your thoughts are on it or is there another technology out there you may know of that's very similar to CB you know and it doesn't really involve necessarily your phone directly to you so I'm not saying I'll completely ignore the phone if there's an app that somehow but unless if you had some sort of add-on that you could plug into your phone and then that causes obviously issues 
Well, maybe not necessarily issues. That could be an idea. You know, if there's something you could tap into your phone so it acts like a CD, so only when you want to be heard, you can press a button or, you know, trigger it. I've got a 44 ton, well, I'm 44 tons so the trailer is not wanting to hop up. I don't want to force it too much just so I don't blow a tyre out. That proves how heavy we are, just how we hopped off that curve. Hopefully done it in a way that we haven't overly damaged it. Hopefully not, but not being as long as it never damaged the truck. Yeah, all interesting traffic this morning. Tell us a Monday morning. <laughs> Meeting everything down the wrong section. And this, you know, yeah, I'll do it, I'll probably chat about this road another day, another video. Because this could be done a lot best this way. It doesn't have to be as narrow as it is at all. But it is what it is. We have to deal with it. That's a perfect example why it doesn't have to be as narrow because truck, two trucks like then come down, we're a bit knackered in the way we can't have to negotiate away past each other. Which we've done pretty well there, you know, messing, you know, a bit concerned with the first trail. I thought, yeah, stop, we're going to slow down. <laughs> Really, you don't want to slow down that way, cause, but then again, you have to, you know, for that. Just because we're going uphill. But it is what it is. Me waffling on as well. So, yeah, I suppose the main point of this video is to see what, what the grounds is with an idea of a CB-esque sort of technology. You know, I think I think the phones, it would be very complex to put in, not without involving data and, and how we're because really you, you want to have it locationally, you don't want to have a, maybe necessarily a national broadcast. You know, ideally, you know, in a few miles or so, you know, five, ten miles, you know, most. Otherwise, if you go too far out, some people may get confused of what road is that again? You know, and they have to panic if it's not on, what should be on the radar at that stage. It could go further, it's nothing to say why it could go further, but national you know imagine if everybody is talking nationally could become a bit awkward <laughs> Ooh, come on baby we can get up this hill yeah so yet again I would like to say thank you very much for watching this video it's just a, a more of a question point video you know just saying I've been thinking about you know does CB still have a place in trucking? That's probably the main question. If so, or if not, or is there another, as I said, is there another solution to, to the issue? Because as I was already trying to elaborate on with all the, uh, you know, other important things going on, is the fact that, you know, there is a gap, I believe, on this. And I think it would become almost... I mean, yes, it, it was, I think the idea will always have flaws. You know, it will never be 100% perfect, but I think it would become a very helpful aid within a truck driver's arsenal if they had it. You know, or had a system that, you know, that we you know the vast majority of truckers would have, you know, Just an idea. So I'll leave it at that. I would like to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. I'm now over 70 subs, so I'm absolutely blown away with that, to be honest. I know, yes, trucking channels that small, I know. But for me, 70 subs, wow, you know, it, it's amazing. 
and it can, you know, it can only get, get better, as I say. <laughs> well, it could get worse, but hopefully it doesn't. So, uh, yet again, I want to say a massive thank you to all my new subs and my old subs. You're all appreciated equally. Um, also, go and check out my Facebook, my Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed, please smash the big subscribe button. And also, if you can follow and all that on Instagram and all that, go and follow and all that on Facebook if you want to. You know, because I, as I said, I always try and prove my uh, social media I'm not the best. Open it, it. A little bit mediocre. <laughs> But I'm getting better, I think, and bit by bit. Uh, anything else to add, admin-wise? I think I've done that all on my uh, other video, which I hopefully should be all good to go. I just need to edit it down, like this one. But I don't perceive any issues of it, so I won't do the mentions that I've done on that video on this one. If you want to hear those mentions and you haven't checked that video out, it'll be the DAF. I'm still deciding what I'm going to call it, but it'll be up probably before this video. It'll be something like DAF update video. It's basically the update video of me and this DAF after, you know, a month and a half, two months of driving it. You know, basically to highlight any qualms and stuff like that, any thoughts on it. You know, that sort of thing. So, yes, again, I will catch you in the next one. Over. Up all night that will forever be our place